Recently, I've been playing around with parabolas and I've asked myself a really interesting question. What would happen if I were to rotate the parabola, let's say 45 degrees? How would I be able to predict what the function will be like or how will it change? Well, to answer this question, let's, let's consider half of the parabola. Just cover this side, in this case, something like this. We're considering half of the parabola, not this side of uh, only, only for simplicity, and and I asked myself, what if I revolved it some degrees, perhaps theta degrees that way? You see that the parabola stays the same, right? Well, how can I uh, predict how the function is going to look like? Because the function is the same. The only thing that that changed is that uh, it's been revolved a certain amount of degrees. Now, uh, what happens to the function? Now. To, to answer this question, we must go back uh, to simple car Cartesian, uh, actually, rectangles. In, in any point, for example, this point right here, I can pick any, it's arbitrary, there's always a certain amount of x and a certain amount of y. And I can make geometric shapes. For example, I can make a, a rectangle, I can make a triangle, and so on and so forth. Now, the important thing about this is that we can use these geometric shapes to take advantage of uh, of their properties. For example, if there's a, a function, I can pick any point here, and for example, if this was the origin, I can pick any x, any y, I can make a rectangle, numerous shapes. But in, in, in this case, we're only interested in rectangles and triangles. So, let's actually isolate what the problem is asking for. Here, we have the parabola shifted, uh, let's say, some theta degrees. Now, notice how it looks exactly the same. It's just, it's just been tilted or shifted some some degrees, theta degrees. Now, uh, this parabola, we're going to use the same property. We're going to pick a point here and we're going to uh, write it using a geometric shape, such as a rectangle, a triangle, and we're going to take advantage of the, f of the properties of those shapes. First, it's the same parabola, but remember, we have an imaginary axis right here, which which was uh, demonstrated in green. And then in this imaginary axis, if you can see it right here, it looks like the same parabola. If, if let, what I did, I picked a rectangle. And this rectangle will have a certain x and a certain y. Well, in this case, I picked an arbitrary x. In this case, it'll be negative x because it's left from the origin. And it has some height y. Any point can be denoted by this rectangle. Now, uh, after noticing this, I'm going to revolve it, let's say, theta degrees, the whole thing. Because it, it, it originally looked like this, and then it was revolved theta degrees that way. So, I'm going to try to study what that point, uh, how that point can be represented. Well, that same point and the same parabola can be represented using a triangle instead. Now, this triangle, uh, I just did not write the rectangle, this triangle has something even more important. This point can be rewritten from the leg, the short leg and long leg. Now this short leg represents the x value from the origin and the y value from uh, uh, the, the actual height from the origin up there. Now, why is this useful? Because this actually uh, tells us the coordinate of that. In other words, if we can find out, uh, I have a, I've shown uh, x prime and y prime using prime to tell the difference from x and y, but um, if we can find this, we can actually find how the function changed. So, let's actually do that. Let's combine both the triangle and the rectangle. So, bear with me. We have here the same parabola. In orange, we have the rectangle. And in green, we have the triangle. Alright? So, and a very important thing is, okay, so if this is the x and this is the y, if we can find the x and y, so that becomes our new priority, we can actually define the coordinate. Now, to find the x and y, we can use uh, two, two, we need actually two requirements. We need the length of this degree and the hypotenuse. Now, let's uh, b before we actually find the degree, uh, let, let's consider this theta. Theta as in uh, the amount of degrees that we want to shift the function. All right. So if this is theta, and remember, the orange is a rectangle, this must be 90 degrees. So we have 90 plus theta. Uh, let's call this uh, remaining side uh, z. All right. So all this must add up to 180 because it's a line. And when you isolate z, z equals 90 minus theta. So this side must be 90 minus theta. Now, um, remember, the, the, 
the triangle includes this whole chunk. So we have already 90 minus theta, which represents from the orange line all the way to the bottom. But we need th this chunk, this chunk right here. So, all right. So theta is this angle right here. If we add theta plus 90 minus theta, we will get this whole angle, or we will we'll call degree, for this triangle. And that is exactly what we need in order to find y and x. Well, to find this whole chunk, we got to find alpha. And to find alpha, we can actually see, if we just forget about the triangle and just concentrate about the rectangle, this alpha has an opposite and adjacent side, which is negative x and y. We can actually write tan alpha equals negative x over y, and then uh, isolate the alpha. Well, we can do this using an arctangent. If we use arctan, arctan of this side, uh, we get alpha equals arctan negative x over y. So, alpha is, neg uh, is arctan negative x over y, which is this side right here. And then we have this side, 90 minus theta. If we join them together with simple addition, you get this. So this degree right here in blue equals arctangent negative x over y plus 90 minus theta. Now, you, now, we just need one more important piece of information, which is the hypotenuse. How do we find the hypotenuse? Well, remember, this hypotenuse is shared by the diagonal of this rectangle. This, di this is also a diagonal. How do you find the diagonal? Well, it's just negative x plus y squared. So, it's just x squared and y squared. So, now we have the hypotenuse, uh, which I'll represent with height, equals square root x squared plus y squared. We have do, two important pieces of information, and now we shall uh, use them to, uh, to successfully execute our problem. Now, we have the triangle from the, from the same problem. We have this degree right here. We have hypotenuse x squared plus y squared, then we have y prime, x prime. Well, we're going to find both of them. Let's actually start with the first one, um, y prime. If we actually uh, consider this, uh, what, what trigonomic identity re uh, considers the opposite over the adjacent? Well, it's sine. Sine of this degree, for now I'll write degree, equals y prime over square root x squared plus y squared. Now, to isolate y prime, I would just go y prime equals square root x squared plus y squared sine of the degree. Well, remember from the, from the previous paper that we've seen that the degree, so now I'll actually write it, x squared plus y squared. The degree was arctan negative x over y plus 90 minus theta. This is the actual degree. Well, uh, traditionally we usually don't take uh, degree uh, trigonomic identities. We don't solve them with the huge and complicated uh, function that we see here. Well, how would we actually solve this? Well, if you actually remember uh, the, the identity sine alpha plus uh, beta, this would actually equal sine alpha cosine beta plus sine beta cosine alpha. So, now we shall use this trigonomic identity in order to solve the following. Well, this still doesn't look like uh, we can actually implement it here, but think about it like this. Think about this as the first angle and this is about the second angle. So, this we can consider as alpha and this as beta. So, let's go. If this is alpha, our equation mandates to put sine alpha, to actually uh, find what sine alpha is. Well, we have to find what sine arctangent negative x over y is. Well, that also looks complicated, but using a little trick, which I will explain in another video, we just write uh, what the tan represents, opposite or adjacent, so it's negative x over y, and then find the missing side, hypotenuse theorem, x squared plus y squared, and then find, with respect to this angle, find sine of this. So, we shall find the sine of this opposite of our hypotenuse, which is negative x over square root x squared plus y squared. Alright, then we just follow along. Cosine beta. Alright, so what's cosine of beta? Beta 90 minus theta is sine of theta. I will explain it in a different video. Alright, so, next thing it says, 
sine of beta. Sine beta is just cosine theta for the same reasons. And then we need cosine of alpha. Well, this is alpha and also looks complicated, but we, we already solved it. Now we just have to take uh, this, this angle respect to, uh, we have to take the cosine respect to this angle. So that'll just be what? Y. Sorry, I'll add a parenthesis. Y over square root x squared plus y squared and parentheses. So this reads negative x over square root x plus x squared plus y squared sine theta plus cosine theta y over x squared plus y squared. Now this actually simplifies what this whole sine is. Okay, good. Now remember this was multiplied by a hypotenuse. So let's actually consider the hypotenuse, which was one over square root. Oh my bad, <laughs> it's not on the bottom. It's x squared plus y squared. Now, this is going to distribute along. Now, x squared plus y squared is the same thing as the denominator. They will cancel out. So you're left with, actually, which is very surprising when I first did it, negative x sine theta plus cosine theta y equals, actually, what we were looking for, y prime right here. Now, what are the implications of this formula? We're not done yet. It pretty much says, whatever theta degree that you want to revolve your original function, you you plug it in here, and you also plug it into this cosine and sine theta. After you evaluate, you put it into your new y function, and you will actually get uh, the, the evaluation, the result. Now, we shall do this for the x portion. Alright, so, we have the same triangle. And this side, we call it degree once again, hypotenuse, x squared plus y squared, y prime, x prime. Now we're going to find this side right here. Well, what trigonomic relationship connects adjacent or hypotenuse? Well, easy. That's, that'll be cosine. Cosine of the degree, we'll write degree like before, equals actually x prime over hypotenuse, x squared plus y squared. Isolate the x prime equals square root x squared plus y squared times this because we move this over there cosine degree now let's actually expand the degree as seen before in the video the degree is known as arctangent negative x y plus 90 minus theta now Using the same method of solving, we will consider this as one angle, and this is a separate angle. Now, because we're doing this, we also must find out what cosine alpha plus cosine beta is. And, and in this video, I will not explain where this comes from. It will be in the next video, but uh, for now, we will just assume that cosine alpha plus beta is just cosine alpha, cosine beta, minus sine alpha, sine beta. Alright, now all we have to do is just uh, follow the formula and just plug it in. So, uh, the formula dictates cosine of alpha. If this, as we consider alpha and this beta, cosine alpha, we will have to take the cosine of this. Let's actually do a representative triangle like before. Alright, so we call this uh, negative x, y, because it, it's a tangent. It says arc tangent. And then hypotenuse, x squared plus y squared. Alright, so it says cosine of this, that should be y over square root of that, of the hypotenuse, y over square root, x squared plus y squared. Now we have to find cosine of beta, cosine of beta, 90 minus theta is just sine theta. Alright, minus sine alpha, well sine of arctangent and of negative x and y, just take the sine of this, which is just negative x, hypotenuse. Alright, we're almost done. And then sine of beta. Sine of 90 minus theta is just cosine. Alright, do some house cleaning. Okay, good. Now this, remember, uh, evaluates cosine. Now we must multiply times hypotenuse, because it was originally multiplied times hypotenuse. x squared plus y squared. Alright, well, this must uh, also d distribute both sides. That means the uh, denominators cancel out. You're left with uh, an amazing fact as well. Y sine theta plus x cosine theta equals your x prime. In other words, 
we originally found that uh, y prime and x prime evaluate to this thing. Now, how do we take advantage of this? Oh, okay. I'll actually use this for now. Let's get a let's get a function that we that we're actually pretty familiar with. So, so we've just finished evaluating. Now we're actually going to uh, plug it into the formulas we've got and actually test and see what what happens. Well, we've considered y equals x squared, and we're going to consider a point for now. 4 comma 16. 4 squared, 16. X value, Y value. Alright, so using our formula, we're going to revolve it 90 degrees. So if the problem looks like this, it's going to move 90 degrees that way, clockwise. So 90 degrees goes into sine of theta. Sine of theta, of uh, sine of 90 will be what? 1. 1 times negative X is negative X. Cosine 90 is 0. That's why it cancels out. Negative X equals Y prime. Now the X portion. Sine of 90 is 1. So that's y plus, and then cosine th uh, 90 is 0. So that cancels out. We're left with y equals x prime. Now what's this tell us? Now let, let, let's actually plug things in. Plug it in, and this is our x, so corresponding original x. We put it in here. That means that negative 4 equals our new y prime. And then our x prime, uh, x prime equals whatever the y is, according to the formula, x prime. Now, what, what does this tell us? This tells us that when the y, when the x is 16, so I'm gonna plug in. I'm gonna do a little graph. When x is 16, let's say here, the y, uh, the y value is negative four, like this. So let's actually think about it. If we had a parabola and we revolved it like this, it'll look something like this, right? And if, uh, remember, we consider a positive x value, so here's my parabola, well, I'll actually draw it. Here's my parabola, and positive value goes that way. So that means if, because I use a positive x value, the y value, if, if, if this is a positive y value, it'll become now negative, because you transitioned it this way. It, if you move the 90 degrees, so if you consider th this point right here, if that was 4 comma 16, the new y value will be negative, but the but the the most important thing here is that this is the actual inverse function. This this formula actually successfully predicts the re the revolution almost of almost every function, and this is very very interesting because you can just plug in any point and you'll see how it react at different revolutions of thetas. And I found hopefully I found that uh, you understood this and uh, you were fascinated as much as I was. Thank you.